Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT faculty at the Unacademy platform. So today I am here to discuss with you a very, very important thing, which is life after NEET PG. So we've been hearing to this very common thing that after you finished your inter second year, that you do your exams well here, this is the turning point of your life. Once you get into your MBBS, you are a doctor and you are done with it and your life is going to be set right. Yes, you think that way, you put in all your hard work, all your efforts get into MBBS. Soon to realize that this is not the end and you have a long way to go ahead. Right from your first year MBBS, you have to start preparing for your uh, postgraduate entrance exam and then you realize that after having cleared that exam is only when you are able to finish your post-graduation and be able to settle down in your life. But is your struggle going to end there is the question. And that is what I am going to discuss today in my discussion with you all. What is the life after NEET PG? So as soon as you write your NEET PG, yes, some of you may turn out to be rankers. Very good. Congratulations. I appreciate all the effort that you have taken to have got into the top slot to get into the rank ranking, the, you know, the top rankers thing. Excellent. I appreciate that totally. But is that the end to your struggles? Please take this question into mind very, very seriously. Having got a rank in your need PG, is it going to give you sustained result henceforth for your lifetime? Are you going to have difficulties henceforth in your life? Yes, no profession comes to you without any uh, problems or difficulties or hurdles. Every profession comes with problems, difficulties and hurdles. But what are those hurdles which are very specific to a doctor which does not take into consideration whether you're a ranker, whether you're not a ranker or whatsoever. Obviously, if you're a ranker, you are amongst the most topmost or the intellectually very good candidates of your badge or maybe the entire medical fraternity. Yes, you are one among them. But what is the harsh truth that prevails today everywhere is nobody remembers you after you have finished your main PG. Once you are into residency, how many of them really bother that did you get your first rank in your main PG? Did you get 100 rank in your main PG or 1000 rank in your main PG? You are just a resident. It is a happiness that lasts with you and only you for the lifetime. I am absolutely not discouraging you at this point of time that don't be a ranker. Please don't get me wrong. You have to be a ranker. You have to have that subject knowledge, but don't take it as granted as what I am trying to explain you because you will face difficulties like how you were preparing in your first year for your NEET PG. Once you have finished your NEET PG, you have to know what you have to prepare for ahead. What's there in a real life ahead for you. So what are the options? So if you are a ranker, if you have been able to get a good rank, obviously you will go into your postgraduate residency, which is obviously understood. You may choose a medical branch. You may take a non-medical or a surgical branch that is optional. Whatever you like, whatever is your individual choice, the choice is made as per whatever is your liking towards the subject. This is sorted. But are everybody going to get a rank? Majority of the population always is left back and people do not know what to do next. If you are not a ranker, you have not got a good rank or you haven't been able to crack. What is the option? Do they have options? Yes, they do have options. You can join government services and through the government quota, you can apply or you can appear for the exams where you have a reserved category of seats available for you to apply, I mean, to get a rank and to go through the reserve category into those government category seats. Yes, you can go through that. You can go into your central service examinations like your UPSC, etc. And you can become one of the IAS, IPS or whatever it is. You can think of going to countries abroad for pursuing your other education. You can go to Germany, Australia, America, London, UK. If you are unable to crack it here, try and give an attempt. And if you are able to succeed, maybe you can go and do your residency over there and come back to your native and practice over here as well. You can go into administration section 
where you can do hospital management, etc. And you can go into that. So these are a few of the variable options you need to explore by yourself. Like there is something called as research, there is something called as pharma, there is something called as aeronautical. So you need to ex research by yourself what interests you. If I am unable to crack and if I don't have the opportunity to get a seat or if I feel that I am lacking in myself, don't give away your hopes there. It's not that every person who goes into PG medical residency or surgical residency is doing great in his life. There are so many other category people who are also doing very well in their lives. And what ultimately matters is how good you are able to live the life for yourself, not for the society, not for anybody else. Most of us have a stigma that what if I do UPSC? What if I go into research? What is my family going to think? What are my relatives going to talk? I was going to be a doctor. I was expected to, do, to be a clinical doctor. How can I be into research? How can I be in pharma industries working on animal models? This is the stigma that is attached to our brains and we usually can't break that stigma and we usually take gaps and gaps and gaps or leaps in our ears waiting to crack this exam. I am not for this persuading you from not doing this exam. Please go ahead and reach and chase your target. But there are a set of students who are unable to do it. Please don't lose your hopes. There are various other options for you as well. So this is about the options for those who have cleared the need and for those who haven't cleared the need PG. Now let's see what happens to those who have taken residency in India. So most often if you have taken residency in India, you have taken a post graduation, there are certain problems which are there in our residency as well. One, the most common problem which every resident feels is long working hours. You have no time. So far in your life, in the you were studying, 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 no time for your life, no time for your family, no time for you. MBBS, the moment you entered MBBS, you were scared to the moment that you have to prepare from your first day in MBBS for an exam which is going to come five years later. So you are preparing for your routine exams, for your internal assessments, trying to understand the uh, new terminology that is being given to you in the first year, trying to understand your medical, everything of the five years and also preparing for your exams. So you have no time then. Once you come to residency, you all have a feeling that, yes, once I go into post-graduation, I'm going to have a hell lot of time I'm going to enjoy. No, most of us are stuck with long working hours. We have to do all the groundwork. I feel so many of so many of the times that I have done or many of us have put in so much of efforts to reach into where we have been. But as a resident, what was I doing? Yes, I was doing very, very, very basic work. I agree. But that basic work is the work that will take you high across the ladder. Because once you know what is there in your basics, like a simple case sheet writing, simple discharge summary, going and monitoring your patients in round, taking the ward rounds, all this ultimately gives you in different ways many skills which you subconsciously adapt to. So don't get disheartened that I'm having long working hours. Don't complain, don't grip. Obviously, I know it's difficult because entire life you've been waiting to reach the residency and have fun. Obviously, you can. I'm not saying you can't. But be mentally prepared. The aim of telling you all this is once you're mentally prepared, you will feel this is not new to me. This is already known to me and adaptation becomes very, very easy. So you have long working hours. You have your seniors bullying you. You have people who will stop you from doing well if you're really good. So there are many things that happen which varies from your residency college where you have been doing, what is the load of patients, what branch you have taken, whether it's a surgical or a medical branch, etc. So it keeps varying. So we will talk a little less about it. Now, once you have finished your residency, is your life going to be a bed of roses? 
that is what we think we all live in a bubble that yes my three years of residency is over now some of us would want to do super specialty some of them would not want to do a super specialty but yes once you come out you feel that first thing is now i am ms or md or dmb whatever you have the degree attached to your name and you feel that yes now is my time now is the time i will enter the world and now is the time i have time for my life to earn money for my finances because all this while your parents your family have been patient enough most often you are at least 22 or 23 by the time you have finished your mbbs and by the time you have finished your post graduation if you have not taken any break maybe 26 or 27 and even more if you have taken break and once you are doing your post graduation maybe you will be 30 to 33 somewhere there so all this 30 33 years i mean your super specialty all this years who has been funding you it's your family it's your parents and they are waiting for you to return back them to them or they're waiting for you to take charge of the family now so that is one of the biggest concerns for every post graduate for every resident who has finished his residency but is it going to be a bed of roses mind you as a fresh post graduate you will not have the kind of money you are thinking of whether it is any medical field or any surgical field you cannot think of earning a very high salary yes you get a decent salary depending upon the branch that you have taken yes you can have good salary enough to sustain you yourself and your family live a nice happy thing but yes you can't expect to have bells you can't expect to have a villa you can't expect to have all the fancy luxurious things you can't think of having multiple holidays all which you thought maybe maybe not that could happen once you have finished your post graduation so there are challenges here it's not only financial challenges you have so many challenges like your professional challenge one simple example if you are a surgeon imagine in 3 years time you think you can learn the entire surgeries if you are a general surgeon you think you can perform a thyroidectomy immediately after you finished if if you are a general surgeon and you can you think of doing a splenectomy immediately following your general surgery no so what do you think let me get trained further so this process of training of doctors keeps on going and going and going now say you are a general physician most often you will be able to treat common ailments but you think you can treat all the things that is there in the, uh, that 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 are there in medicine obviously not so you think let me do a fellowship in diabetology let me do a fellowship in cardiology whatever so you want to do something that gives you an extra edge over others and meanwhile you are doing so you are spending your years and that is again going to affect your financial concern these are all interrelated i am only explaining to you the truth of life after neat pg this is nothing to do for demotivating you or you know getting your morale low this is only to warn you that you need to keep your strength high you need to be confident enough that i am going to manage things in a proper way while i am doing residency i will think of what is the sub speciality of my choice if i want to do a fellowship say if you are a general physician i want to do a fellowship in diabetology i will look during my residency of the available options is there a possibility of me to do a course online or maybe uh, not a active course where i have to go to the university can i learn this through online platforms can i get a degree online yes you can there are so many things that are coming up so you can do multiple things as a surgeon you can learn so many basic skills during surgery so what happens during residency once you finished your neat pg you think that my trouble is over let me enjoy my life what happens you take your life a little easy because of which maybe you have taken the surgical skills that you wanted to learn a little lighter than actually it had to be 
so maybe you are not able to learn that much so you need to again be in task and in force to learn those skills as much as possible during your residency itself try and think of ways where you can earn and you can also learn so do all that research during your residency because it's not always going to be a bed of roses for those who do not have a background for those who already have established hospitals who have their parents working or for those who have um, you know already a way that they can reach to you know a good job or a good position in life well and good i'm not saying it's wrong for them it's absolutely good for them but for those who don't you need to prepare or plan your life accordingly once you have done all this now it's the work life balance for doctors it's very very difficult you have calls during the day you have calls during the night you have to balance your work you have to balance your family for girls you have to go through marriage you have to go through pregnancies and children for men for boys you have to think about working or think about learning how to upgrade your skills how to set apart from other doctors where to set up a practice how to set up a practice how to gain popularity how to become a good doctor so so many things keep revolving around us as doctors so what is it that is very very important during all this time is having self motivation there are so many so many videos that i have seen online for students who are appearing for neat those who are appearing for general exams there are so many motivating videos it's absolutely good to go through those videos i don't say you should not go through but having going through those videos try and develop an attitude where you can motivate yourself you don't need an external force to motivate you if you're listening to me today i don't want you to come back to any of my motivational sessions tomorrow what i want you to do is become a self motivator for yourself that is the achievement that i can have if i if you are able to motivate yourself because tomorrow maybe i am there i am not there or any other person who is motivating you may be there may not be there may not be motivating you may not be putting up the videos for whatsoever x y z reason or maybe not able to understand the difficulties that you are going through right now you are in need pg the topics on motivational videos may be to that particular thing around and maybe once you have gone into residency post residency and real life challenges nobody can micromanage those situations who can man micromanage those situations it's only and only you so please try and work on yourself there is no secret ingredient in your success for life it's just you so with this i leave you bye